Hi, I'm Christy Abate, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia with our host, Anna Ramondi. Anna is a spiritual medium, author, motivational speaker, and energy healer. She's a regular on the Dr. Oz Show and has been a featured guest on shows like The Drew Barrymore Show and Good Day New York. Each week, Anna interviews professionals from the metaphysical world, and at the end, Anna offers our guests a reading. I know you're going to enjoy this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I'm so happy and excited to announce my guest, Maniza Ahmed, to the podcast today. Hi, Maniza. Hi, Anna. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. So you're a medical intuitive. Can you tell us what that means, please? Sure. So medical intuitive means a lot of things to a lot of people. But to me, when people ask me what that means, I am able to read what's going on in people's bodies. Sometimes for some medical intuitives, I think it comes as vision, sound. For me, it's a bit of vision, but mostly clairsentience, so being able to feel what's going on in someone's body, plus claircognizance in the terms of just kind of knowing. It's, it's different than my own thoughts, because it feels like, like a brick drops into my head, like a thought is like a thud, and it's not my own thought. So. That's what claircognizance means to me. And an example of that is when people say to me, for example, oh, you know, I have back pain. It's my kidneys and my kidneys. And I'm like, no, I don't think it is. I think it's either, you know, you have a virus or something else going on. And as I explain it to people, when I start speaking that, the intuition kind of confirms itself as I go. So typically that's why, that's how it works for me. And that's what medical intuitive means to me. That's interesting because, you know, as a medium, I have all the clairs going on, but I'm not a medical intuitive per se. Mm-hmm. But when I'm in a reading with someone and I pick up things, I actually feel it in my own body. So right. um, I can say, okay, something, I feel like something's wrong with, you know, your ovary, you know, something like, like that. Um, but you take it a step further because you're able to work with the people and help them to heal, correct? Right. So my modalities are different than most intuitives. I think a lot of medical intuitives I've worked with will prescribe energy work or meditation practices and what have you. I work directly with foods and supplements to actually turn around chronic illness symptoms, autoimmune symptoms. So it's, um, it's, it does take it a lot of steps further. And there's a lot more sort of, I have a background in nutrition training, raw food nutrition training, um, and a lot of energy modalities, which are just kind of it's like a potpourri of things that emerge when I'm working with people, what I need to work with them. And so do you ever recommend any kind of energy work or balancing work with people? And how do Absolutely. you know, and how do you know what supplements to tell people to take? Well, that involves a lot of learning and training. I um, have been working with the protocols of medical medium for a long time. And I found that before I brought his protocols into my practice, that I was able to have some success with people. But since I have, um, it's so much more effective and people get better faster. And so that's the modalities I use, although I've studied lots of different modalities under many, many different teachers. I find that this one tends to work the best and it helped me heal, my dad heal. Um, So training is really important if you're going to prescribe supplements. You really need to know what you're doing with supplements. And you also with food, it's really important to know what you're doing, especially say someone has hemorrhoids, you know, being able to tell them the root cause of the hemorrhoid or being able to tell them why they have thyroiditis or why they have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or why they're fatigued or why their hair is falling out or, you know, why they have burning down there or, you know, it's like a myriad of symptoms. And so I am working with people with pretty serious conditions. Um, Most of the time people find me because they were let down by the medical system, as in they've been to all the doctors, they spent tens of thousands of dollars and had no answers. Blood tests are normal. They aren't able to, um, they're told either they need to be on a drug for the rest of their life or they're told that they, the medical system has no solution for them. Typically, that's when people find me. 
So do you actually diagnose? No, I don't. I cannot. But you're very familiar with certain diseases and the, you know, the body's anatomy? Well, I'm very familiar with the body's anatomy, but people will come to me and already have a diagnosis. Oh, you know, because okay. they've been to the medical system, they're already telling me what their diagnosis is. I'm not diagnosing. So I can tell them what, I can see inflamed nerves in the body. That's, a, that's something that over time as well, my intuition has become really keen on. Um, being able to find in, inflamed nerves. I can look at someone or be talking to someone over Zoom or over the phone, even if I'm not seeing them on a video screen. And I can start to feel like, oh, there's an nerve back there. Oh, no underlying viral infection and then I'm able to and so yeah so inflamed nerves being able to pick up on pain usually also because that's able to pick up on and but inflammation really doesn't tell someone what the solution is inflammation doesn't tell someone what the answer is um, inflammation will beyond the inflammation I'm giving them responses like you know look into what other pathogens might be in their body. That's another thing I pick up on are pathogens that are in people's bodies. That's interesting. So my hip is bothering me. Can you pick up anything about my hip? Yeah, it feels to me there's um, a little bit of um, an old shingles infection that might be hanging around and got inflamed recently. Oh, I hope not. I did have shingles. But shingles can hang around in the body and show up later when you're stressed or have other things going on and suddenly the pain pops up and that's how viruses operate because they can be kind of stealth in the body they hide for a long time and if they find an opportunity like when you're stressed or haven't slept or having some fatigue then they kind of pop up and you're like oh i have a pain now so helping people to understand the trajectory of their of their health like understand the chronology of events what led to what led to what is also part of what i do because there's so much confusion around that you know people will say oh i started um I started to eat clean and now I have diarrhea and all these symptoms and I think it's because I'm eating clean and I will have to then explain what that's really from because by eating more apples or eating you know more fruit you're not necessarily going to get sicker you're going to get better but there's also then detox so I explain detox so I have background in detox and understanding that so combining what I know along with intuition has just been I just find it like I love living this way because it feels really empowering to me, but I also help empower my clients. And how does your spirituality play a part of all of this? Oh gosh, so much. I mean, it brought me closer to God um, in a big way, being able to understand how the human body really works and watching people get better. It brings you closer to God because it's like witnessing a miracle every single time. And I don't walk in with an expectation that someone's definitely going to get better. Or I definitely know what they have going on or I can definitely help them. I, as a guarantee, but I always go in wondering if, you know, what I'm recommending is going to work and I have hope and faith in it. But when I've witnessed over and over and over again, people saying, oh, I don't have a migraine anymore. And, you know, my thyroid numbers have come down and I've off my medication and my doctor was so shocked. Um, it kind of, it builds your faith, but also just like watching those miracles unfold over and over again. I'm always in awe. Yeah, I love that. You know, yeah. as, as a healer, I mean, I think that our greatest gift is recognizing how God plays through us and yeah. brings these miracles, you know, to the surface. You know, it's just, it's, it's the most amazing thing. Like when people say, why do you do this? And why do you work with death? It's because when yeah. I watch the transformation in people, it's like, yeah. God is good. God is good. God um, is good. And how did you like, like your intuition like how did you build this your intuition like to get to the point where you can actually know this and feel this and and help so um as a kid i always knew i was intuitive i would have dreams um premonition so part of my intuition is premonition um i would have dreams that would i wake up the next day and that whole dream would unfold right before my eyes and a couple of times I had a dream about death, so that was kind of scary to me. And I was a kid, so I was younger, so it was harder to kind of figure out. And I had no one to talk to about it. Um, even the dreams that came true that were like normal, kind of neutral, 
girl dreams were all still freak. It would freak me out for days. I'm like, oh my God, how did that happen? So I always knew I was intuitive. And since I was a little baby, <laughs> um, I think two years old, um, my mom would have, there's pictures of me walking around with this black bag that I used to carry around. And my mom would say, it was your, it was your medicine bag. Like you would call it, this is my medicines. And she said, you would play with your grandparents and you would like tell them that you could fix them and you could heal them. And she said, you would just like, you would play this game throughout your childhood. My favorite story as growing up as a girl was Florence Nightingale, like being able to take care of the sick, you know? So that's been a part of who I am. I think it's been it comes from past life experiences. I think I've been a healer in many lifetimes and that knowing has always been there. Like I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to go to med school. That didn't work out and I'm grateful it didn't work out for many reasons, um, but it allowed me to find my true path. I mean, I studied finance. I actually went 13 years into a career in finance and like a corporate background like you have, Anna, and then got really sick. I mean, I was sick my whole life, but after I, I was 13 years into this career, I had just moved to the United States. Um, I became really, really sick. And then I quit my job and I focused on my own healing. And that's the path. I mean, literally it was one night in the month of Ramadan, I was praying. I had just moved to this country. It had been like a year. I was really not well. I remember it was 2005 and um, I was prostrated on the ground, like fighting with God. I was almost like, why am I alone? Why am I struggling? I'm so young. I shouldn't have to deal with these issues that I'm having, health issues. And I miss my family. I was all alone here. There was just me and my husband. And um, in that moment, I heard a voice. And that voice said, you're not alone. And I looked at my husband and I said, did you hear something? And he said, no, just you saying, why am I struggling? And you just, just like your, your voice. And I said, well, there's a voice that said, you're not alone. And anyway, I just, I, kind of went back into where I was praying and I felt like I felt like something lifted me like you know like a like a really big hug kind of picked me up and I and I still remember it like it happened yesterday but Anna that was the moment that turned the rest of my life around and my story is so similar because I was in corporate America for 14 years, moved to Connecticut, very sick, um, didn't know where to turn. And then all of a sudden I started meeting alternative healers. And then yeah. I was like, this is the path that I need, I need to be. And when I almost died, when I was in my forties, you know, I said to God, this is it. You got me. And that's pretty much when it all started. You know, it's kind of like you hit the rock bottom yeah. and you say, Am I alone? No. I mean, I've always knew that God was with me, but we're never alone. None of us are ever alone. And I'm sure you bring that to people where people understand that, you know, whether they're calling it God or Allah or Sam, you know, the power mm -hmm. in the sky, you know, um, yeah. it doesn't really matter, but it's that yeah. um, knowingness that we're not alone that I also think helps people heal and is pretty wonderful. I think that's the, then that's the other part. So I do medical intuitive readings, but then I also do emotional support work because really, you know, we can have, we can have wounded souls, as you know, mm -hmm. we can have a wounded heart. We can have a wounded, our spirit as in our will, our will to um, take action, but there's strength that we have, like, you know, our convictions. Mm -hmm. And I think we can be broken in any of those places. And sometimes, you know, I was working with a young woman who was in her twenties, and she was healing from thyroid issues and fatigue. And, you know, she was, um, she was from Trinidad and Tobago. And so she was, you know, she had this lovely like Caribbean accent and, you know, we would talk about things and I would say to her, you know, how about you do this? And she goes, Oh, I don't know. And then she, I said, well, what about this? And she goes, Oh, I don't know. Like, and it was always like, this, oh, I don't know. And I told her, I said, it feels to me like you have a broken will. Like you just don't feel like doing anything. And she's like, yeah, I don't. And so it's the intuition works in all ways to be able to just pick up on what people are experiencing. Sometimes it's a soul and a heart wound. You know, I can feel when someone's carrying something that's out of this lifetime, that's from an older lifetime. I'm not like you as in, you know, I can hear other souls and spirits on the other side. I can feel them. I don't hear them. Um, but I think I, there's, there's the intuitions, like it's so hard to define intuition as you probably know, because it works in so many ways, like very different, and it comes very, in different right. ways, right? It comes like, in different you know ways. what? And I tell people all the time, yeah, 
I can see, I can feel, I just know. But the feeling is the really big one. It's not seeing spirit. It's not seeing people. It's feeling the love. Um, it's the all knowing that somebody is hurting because of something else that I may be hearing. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And intuition is very different for everybody. I'm happy that you're able to still work with clients over all of this. Have you been doing it on Zoom or through the telephone? I've always done it on telephone. I used to have local clients when I lived in Connecticut and they would come see me, but very few. Like most of the work that I do, I work with people in about 72 different countries and it's all on the phone or on Zoom, depending on, you know. And how, how do people um, get to your website? What's your website address? Um, www.muniza, M-U-N-E-E-Z-A, Ahmed, A-H-M-E-D.com. That's wonderful. Okay, so can I just tell you who's around you right now? Because I feel a woman, okay? Um, and she's pacing back and forth um, in front of you. Sure, I would love that. Um, and mm -hmm. she's saying that um, she was a little bit too hard, okay? A little bit too hard. Like she didn't understand. Um, she's a little old fashioned. Didn't understand where you were going or why. Like, why do you want to do this? You know, why don't you just take care of the family? her family, her children, her grandchildren, okay? Um, is your husband's mother passed? Yeah, I, when the moment you started talking, I'm like, that's my mother-in-law. Yeah, um, it completely her. Um, she loves it when you make ethnic food for your girls, loves it. Um, she's saying you bring them into it, you bring her into the mix, okay? She softened. She's saying, I've softened, I've softened. I now understand, but she was also afraid of you. Okay, um, a little bit jealous, okay, but afraid of you, afraid of what you represented that, sh and she didn't understand it. I mean, let's face it, what is fear born out of? It's usually in ignorance, okay? Um, yeah. You know, fear of what I don't understand or what I can't be. She really was in awe of you, okay? Awe of you. Um, you know, when she's telling me that when she was in the dynamics of your family and she saw that love, you know, that her husband, that your husband has toward you and you have toward him and your children have toward you, thrilled. She loves that you're raising your girls to be free, that there aren't those hard, fast rules. Like you have to do this. You have, like they are free to express. She was not free to express. Um, you know, she was locked in a box. You know, that's what it was about, but she's happy now. And she's very I'm much so around your house. She is. I feel her a lot. I tell my husband and he says he doesn't really connect, but I think he can. He just, he's still, I think, processing his mom's death. He's extremely close to her. Yeah, um, it's hard. It's you know, hard. it's hard to process. I mean, as a grief counselor, you know, everybody uh -huh. grieves differently. You know, not everybody grieves the same way. And so that's his way of grieving and where he needs to be. And he doesn't need to be on the same page with you because, you know, he'll get it when he gets it he does dream about her. Yes, right? he does. Yeah, I know he does because she says, and what about the dreams? You know, he does dream about her and it's mm -hmm. pretty wonderful when he feels the connection to her. Um, he's not making it up. It really is her, really is oh. her. I, I hope he gets that. I hope he knows that it really is her because he sometimes questions himself, but I think okay. my husband also has, he has deep intuition. He's just, yeah. and you know, that it, with you. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I always said, I mean, my husband is a mathematician married to me, you know, everything yeah. in his world was very black and white, you know, yeah. and I can only bring him to the place where he can nourish his soul, but he has to partake. And yeah. it's been, we married a long time. Long time. And he's <laughs> finally getting there. Finally getting. And the first time he saw me on a stage, he was like, oh my God, this is what you do. You know, it wasn't that long ago. So, you know, when they you know, get Anna, there, they it's get a funny there. story you're sharing also, because we share offices, like we have a door in between our two offices. And so when I'm working in my office and sometimes he's, his door is open or he's you know, not as busy or less like reading something and he'll hear me on a call. And, he, and this is only since we've been in this house, which has been a couple of years, he'll come out and he'll be like, when I'm done, he's like, I didn't realize this is what you do. It's so yeah, funny. It's amazing, right? right. Well, my husband and I work together now. 
And so when people send him like notes about, you know, what I did and what I did, he's like, wow, that's pretty cool, Anna. It's like, and where have you been? But you know what? They get there when they need to. So anyway, thank you so much um, for being my guest today. I hope everybody that, that heard you speak um, really gets an understanding for what medical intuition is all about and how it's, you know, I really feel that when medicine shakes hands with the alternative medicine is when the whole world will heal. So thank you so much um, for what you do. Thank you, Anna. I couldn't agree more. Thank you for having me. It's always amazing to connect with you. And I'm so grateful you invited me on here. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.